we look at Nigeria's response to the deportation row between South Africa and Nigeria, the case for investment in deep sea ports in West Africa, as well as the oil sector in Gabon. Nigeria's Foreign Affairs Minister says a row over deportations with South Africa should not negatively affect long-term economic and business ties. This follows this week's deportation of 125 Nigerians from South Africa over alleged fake yellow fever vaccination certificates. In response, Nigeria deported 84 South Africans. Our team in Abuja spoke to Ambassador Olukbenga Ashiru, Nigeria's Minister of Foreign Affairs. As a government, we have um, expressed our strong condemnation of that action because there are procedures and protocols on handling issues of uh, yellow cards. It is true some sovereign nations can require yellow cards and um, we are aware that um, some countries in the southern hemisphere, including South Africa, require yellow cards for travelers. And also, yellow cards is a requirement for granting of South African visas. So these same yellow cards were submitted by the applicants to the South African missions in Nigeria. And it's on verification of those cards that they were granted South African visas. Now, if South African officials in Nigeria have cross-checked and verified those yellow cards and given visas to passengers and travelers, so why should the immigration officials at the point of entry now say the same yellow cards that have been verified by their own officials are fake? So we find that really very disturbing. And even in all circumstances, the normal procedure is that if you arrive in any country requiring that you must have yellow cards, and you even forgot your own at home, you can, it can happen to any passenger. The normal procedure is that you will be quarantined and given the vaccination. After three hours or so, they will observe you. Then they will allow you entry. Yeah. It is very cruel, in my view, to just deport people based on that. And in fact, it contravenes an article in the World Health Organization on guidelines for implementing uh, the rules and regulations governing yellow cards. It's a violation of WHO regulations. Now, the deportation row between South Africa and Nigeria continues to deepen, but how do you intend to tackle this serious problem? Yeah, we are um, already uh, tackling the problem. As you know, um, when it happened on Friday, I instructed our High Commissioner in South Africa to immediately lodge strong protests in Pretoria. This was done. Also, the South African High Commissioner in Abuja was invited here on Monday and he was met by my permanent secretary who also expressed the same condemnation and protest. Uh, since Monday, of course, that has um, signaled meetings between the two governments in Pretoria. So our officials are working on resolving the whole matter in a holistic way so that this Irritants, this irritation will not be occur again. But I must say, without any hesitation, that the two institutions who are fueling this irritation in South Africa Nigeria relations are the South African immigration and the police. They are the ones harassing Nigerians indiscriminately. And um, I believe when we meet at the Financial Commission, all these issues will be brought to the table and discussed in a general way. Now, as of yesterday, there was still a deportation, and I think a sour relationship between the two countries will have a negative impact on both economies. What do you think about this? Yeah, you know that um, 125 Nigerians were deported in two days. So what our own people did was to be more, um, at least to check, the papers of um, people coming in into the country. And um, it just happened that they found out that most of those coming, uh, their immigration papers were not uh, correct. So they were promptly deported. And um, I believe so far, um, I understand the figure of over 125 have been deported back to South Africa. But by the time we resolve the matter, then I believe the uh, all this will uh, also um, uh, take shape and um, there may not be need to 
took for the action. As African countries continue to increase and upgrade their infrastructure, seaports are set to attract huge investment over the medium term. To get a sense of the opportunity, Wale Famurewa spoke to Amadou Wada, Senior Vice President at the Africa Finance Corporation. If you look at the development of seaports in Africa, um, most of the ports were built during the colonial era and um, uh, there was very little thinking in terms of uh, draft limitations at the time. And um, uh, most of the ports were also located closer to the metropolis and um, uh, with increasing population and growth in uh, traffic, especially as a result of the uh, container revolution. Um, uh, increasingly, you find very little capacity for these ports to expand. And uh, what that has done is um, uh, it has resulted in most of West African ports being heavily congested. And uh, that's the phenomenon that um, uh, we are facing right now with most of the West African ports. Mm. And let's talk a bit about those West African ports. Okay. Um, clearly, Nigeria seems to be the logical place to invest, given the population, given its positioning in the, on the, on the, in the region. Mm. But give us a sense of what is going on with regards to investments in ports in the region right now. Um, Nigeria undertook some major policy reforms in 2004. Um, 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 it decided to concession most of its terminal operations, 26 in total, to the private sector. And um, uh, what that has done is it has helped significantly reduce the um, uh, bathing time for vessels um, uh, who are entering in Nigeria. And as a result, has significantly reduced congestion charges that shipping lines have been um, um, uh, adding to imports and exports out of Nigeria. For instance, um, uh, immediately after the launching of the, um, uh, um, uh, the reforms, uh, shipping lines have reduced their congestion charges from $525 to $75, which if you take on an annual basis was almost $200 million worth of savings to the Nigerian economy. But that's more or less a short-term fix. But as the population continues to grow and uh, demand for imports and exports continue to grow, there is the increasing need to have a deep sea port where you can have much deeper draft to be able to attract mega vessels, um, uh, which is what is prevalent in some of the big economies like Singapore, Rotterdam, things like that. All right. Yeah. Well, so how do we get the investments now? There's a sense that these are huge multi-billion dollar investments. I mean, the seaport that is being proposed in Lagos, for instance, mm -hmm. we're hearing that it's going to cost well over a billion dollars. Absolutely. Give us a sense of how to get the financing. How do we get the investments in for these yes. projects? Um, like you rightly stated, um, uh, these are huge investments. And um, uh, it would require some form of public-private partnership. Um, uh, increasingly, African uh, governments are moving away from uh, having the national port authorities be the be operator as well as the regulator. Mm -hmm. Increasingly, you see most, co uh, most ports are being concession. The most recent were in uh, Sierra Leone, uh, which, was which was concession to the Bollery Group, and uh, it should attract investments in the range of 120, 130 million for the next two to three years. A similar exercise was conducted in Liberia, where um, the government uh, appointed APM Mola as the concessionaire, and they also expected to invest up to $100 million in the next year or two. Um, in Nigeria, um, uh, there are plans to develop a deep sea port at Leki, like you rightly stated. And uh, I think it is the most natural um, location for a deep sea port within West Africa, given that Nigeria accounts for up to 60% of the population of West Africa. It would make more sense to locate the deep sea port here and to have a and, uh, use it as a transshipment hub for other um, African destinations. Right. The West African country of Gabon recently named a new government and among them a new Minister of Oil, Energy and Water Resources. For a look at trends, issues and the legal framework of the oil sector in Gabon, we spoke to Charles Chen, CEO of the Independent Petroleum Consultants. I believe that um, uh, 2012 will almost be like uh, 2011 
there have not been any important field taken on stream this year, so I do expect the production to be around 240,000 bars a day. I cannot comment uh, on the new government. We got a new minister. He's still uh, in the transition period. So I believe it will take some time before we can really comment uh, on, on the oil sector, particularly with, uh, uh, with reference to the new ministry. Yeah, but what about exploration? As I, say, as I pointed out in my intro, we're seeing a peak in production from Gabon this year, at least according to some of the figures that we have seen. On the exploration front, are we seeing companies beginning to, to, to look a little more actively for oil in Gabon? Uh, last year and the uh, beginning of this year has been quite active. There have been a number of seismic acquisitions, particularly in southern Gabon. And um, we are really entering uh, uh, the important phase of exploration with uh, the uh, processing of seismic and probably the delineation of some prospect. I do believe that uh, uh, in 2012, uh, beginning 2013, we see some uh, exploration drilling. From where you said... And that should yeah. give us... Yeah, go on. I'm sorry, could you repeat? I did not... Okay, I wanted to understand from you, uh, from you you're saying that you, we expect to see some drilling on the exploration front in 2012. Who, are, who is drilling and where are they looking at? It's broken. Uh, hello? Um, I just wanted to find out from you, in terms of those companies that are hello? active in Gabon, the companies that are active in Gabon, are we see, where are they looking at and what kind of fields? Uh, do you see them uh, increasing activity? Uh, I said that, um, you know, with the uh, seismic acquisition and some drilling in 2012 uh, and beginning of 2013, mm -hmm. uh, we should um, uh, see whether the, we can make additional discovery in the country. Uh, 2011 saw a discovery in, uh, in southern Gabon, in the pre-salt area. And uh, for some uh, specialists, uh, if you look at uh, a company like Petrobras farming into two blocks in northern Gabon, uh, one would believe that uh, the similarity in geology between uh, West Africa and, uh, and South America is uh, the way people think uh, uh, exploration is going to be targeted at. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, Petrobras is one of the companies that is looking at uh, increasing exploration in Gabon. What other companies are active in the country at the moment? Uh, let me say so. Since Petrobras has run into these uh, two blocks in northern Gabon, many companies believe that this, there is a similarity in geology between uh, West Africa and Brazil in general. So many companies, including majors, are uh, going to compete on the exploration side in Gabon, in the 